today we're going to talk about evolutionary stability. Rather than rationally making your choice, let's imagine the players have a gene that dictates how they play. So you're going to either have a gene that makes you play A, or you have a gene that makes you play B. Your score determines your success in passing on your genes to the next generation. You can think of your score as how much food you get, and the more food you have, the more children you get. Now, let's take this game. Let's imagine that there are 10 trillion bacteria, and they all have the play A gene. They're in some vat. Then you introduce 10 bacteria that have the play B gene. Or maybe there, was, there were mutations, and 10 of the 10 trillion play A gene bacteria had a mutation. What do you think is going to happen over the long run? Now, in this game, I made the payoff symmetric, so it doesn't matter if you're player one or player two. You'll end up with the same payoff, and I'll do that with all my evolutionary games. So again, there's, there's a vat of 10 trillion bacteria that have the play A gene. You introduce 10 bacteria that have the play B gene. You walk away and you come back after 50,000 generations. What do you expect to see? Well, the, the A's in this game are getting two no matter what. The B's are getting five no matter what. So the B's are getting more food than the A's. That means they'll have more offspring. offspring. They'll grow exponentially and eventually they'll take over the colony. So all A in this game is not evolutionarily stable. Because even if you start with 10 trillion A's, few mutations that are B's or a few invaders that are B's will be able to take over this colony. So we can make a prediction that if there are mutations, and there always are in evolution, if you have a colony of all A's, it's not going to stay that way. Let's do another game. So same situation. Now you've got 1 trillion play A genes and 10 have the play B gene. Well, you walk away, you come back after a few thousand generations. What do you think is going to happen? Well, in these games, you're playing against a randomly selected creature. So if there's a trillion creatures that have the play A genes, and only 10 if they have the play B genes, at least initially, you're almost certainly playing against an A. Well, if you're an A and you're playing against an A, that's pretty good. You're getting seven. But if you're a B and you're playing against an A, that's bad. You're getting zero. So I think we would predict that if there's a trillion that have the play A genes and 10 that have the play B genes, the ones that have the play B genes wouldn't do as well, you know, spreading their genes to the next generation. They would die out. So in this situation, if you start with a trillion play A and 10 play B, you come back after 50,000 generations, you'd still have almost all A except for maybe a few mutations. So in this game, almost everyone being A that is evolutionarily stable. Okay, now let's consider the same game, but ask, is everyone play B evolutionarily stable? If I reverse who has what gene to start with, do we still have an evolutionarily stable outcome? Why don't you pause the video and figure out the answer for yourself? Okay, so you've got a trillion people that have the B gene. Remember, it doesn't matter if you're player one or two in these games. I made everything symmetric. But, you know, every generation there's a few mutations and you've got 10 people who have the play A gene. What happens? Do the A's take over? Do they die out? Well, I think they die out. I think everyone play B is evolutionarily stable. Because remember, you're almost certainly playing against the bees, right? Because there's a trillion of them. You play against a randomly selected opponent. So it's true, there's a small chance two A's will play against each other, and if they do, they get a little bit higher payoff than the, than the bees will ever get. But the odds of that happening are so incredibly small that you're much, much better off being a bee. Now, yeah, if, you know, there was like half of a trillion mutations, and they were that, you know, that were, then the A's would have the advantage. But mutations don't work that way. There's only going to be a few every generation. So if the first few mutations don't take off, if, they're, if, if they don't have an advantage, or at least if they're not at a severe disadvantage, then they're never going to take over the colony. So this colony, if it starts out with almost all bees, except for a few mutations, you know, you, you walk away, you come back, you'd expect it to still be almost all bees. All bees are evolutionarily stable. 
Now, if you remember Nash equilibria, AA is a Nash equilibria, but this is also a Nash equilibria because a best response to someone else playing B is for you to play B. Well, that's analogous to what's happening with his evolutionary games, right? If everyone else is B, you want the B gene. A way to think about this is imagine you're gonna be playing this game, but before you play, you get to craft your genes. You get to determine what gene you'll have. Well, if you know almost everyone has the A gene, you're gonna want the A gene. But if almost everyone has the B gene, you're gonna want the B gene. So everyone right here is evolutionarily stable. So evolution doesn't automatically move us to the, the best possible outcome for everyone. You can sort of be stuck here in a suboptimal equilibrium, just as rational people playing games can be stuck in suboptimal outcomes. In fact, let's compare Nash equilibria to evolutionary stability. Now, I'm not gonna prove this rigorously, but this is basically how it works. The set of Nash equilibria is strictly bigger than the set of evolutionarily stable strategies. So as you can tell from this diagram, um, if it's evolutionarily stable, it's a Nash equilibrium, but it might be a Nash equilibrium and not be evolutionarily stable. So I haven't shown you that yet. So let me give you an example of an outcome that is evolutionary, that is a Nash equilibrium, but is not evolutionarily stable. So everyone playing A is a Nash equilibrium, right? Let's just review why. Remember, it's a Nash equilibrium if you don't regret what you've done, and that includes ties. So you play this game, and the other person writes down A, and you write down A. Do you regret? Well, no, because you got one, and you would say to yourself, well, if I did something else, if I played B, I still would have gotten one. So everyone playing A is a Nash equilibrium. Now, I mean, I wouldn't expect people to actually get all A. I mean, if I had reasonably intelligent people and had them play this game for real money, I would expect that it end up here. But that's a different question from whether everyone play A is a Nash equilibrium. So everyone play A is a Nash equilibrium because if the other guy's playing A, you don't regret playing A. But now let's ask, is it evolutionarily stable? So let's imagine we have 10 trillion bacteria that have the play A gene and we have 10 bacteria that have the play B gene. What happens? Well, I think eventually the play B genes would dominate. Now let's see why. You're almost certainly going to be playing against an A. And if you're playing against an A, it doesn't matter if you're an A or a B. But there is a tiny, tiny chance that you'll be playing against a B. And if you play against a B, you'd rather be a B than an A. Because if you play against a B and you're a B, you get three, while if you're an A, you just get one. So the Bs have a slight advantage. As long as there's more than one mutant B, the mutant Bs on average will have a slightly higher payoff. That means you'd expect maybe in the next generation, there might not be just 10 Bs, there might be 12 or something, right? And it'll go up a little bit. But then note, the more Bs there are, the greater the relative advantage to being a B. So, you know, we'll start at 10 trillion and 10, and slowly the bees will move up and move up, but then it'll like avalanche, right? Then once there's a lot of bees, man, the advantage of being a bee would just be massive. So this is an example of you have an outcome that's a Nash equilibrium, but it's not evolutionarily stable. Really what's going on is in a Nash equilibrium, I'm allowed to be certain about what you're doing. I'm willing to play A if I am 100% certain that you're gonna play A. That's the only case in this game I'm willing to play A is if I'm completely certain you'll play A. Now in terms of evolution, we can never be certain. There's always the possibility of a mutation. So I am, in evolutionary games, I'm not allowed to assign a probability of zero or a probability of one to you playing a strategy. So if there's a tiny chance that you're gonna play B, I do not wanna play A. I'm better off playing B myself. You can imagine if you're, you're playing this game with somebody, you know, you're going to be playing it and you get to craft your gene beforehand, you'd want the B gene if, you know, there's even a tiny chance that someone else is going to have the B gene as well. Let's do another game. Let me ask you, what do you think? Is everyone play A in this game evolutionarily stable? Why don't you pause the video and figure it out? Well, 
okay, there's a 10 trillion play A and 10 play B. You're almost certainly playing against an A. And if you play against an A and you're an A, you get four. And if you play against an A and you're a B, you get four. So that, that's a tie. But there is a slight chance they'll be playing against a B. And if you're playing against a B, you'd actually rather be a B than an A. So this is another game where the Bs have a slight advantage if there's a, t a tiny number of Bs compared to As. Now, the more Bs there are, the greater the advantage of being a B. So AA is, it is a Nash equilibrium, right? Because if you're certain the other person's gonna play A, you're quite willing to play A yourself. But it's not evolutionarily stable because there's a slight advantage to having to play B gene, if, even if there's a tr 10 trillion play A and only 10 play B. All right, thank you.